Hey everyone, my name is Raphael and today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to create a simple iOS game. Now, simply here, I have got um two sound effects and other image files which are going to pretty much the um textures for our app. So, simply here what I did was I've created a new Xcode project and um I'm going to teach you also a lot of Xcode's basics as we continue on. So, this is a um I'll be um doing more code tutorials as well, so be sure to stick around for more. And um so we're gonna click a single view application and click next. So I'm gonna name my product simply as Fruit Catcher. So that is that is the name for um for the game. Um you you have to make sure our your language is Objective C, because that is the coding language that we'll be using throughout the entire series. And our devices is universal, so it works on iPhone and iPad, and click next. Simply save it nice and safe, so I'm going to replace my previous, well, my previous project, and now we have created our project. So here in Xcode, we're going to um, make sure that our app runs in landscape mode. So under here, under deployment info, we're going to untick portrait. And for our deployment target, we are gonna click the little arrow right here and make it iOS 10.0. So what this means is, if our user is running at least iOS 10, they can run our game. If they're running like iOS 9, 8, or 6, or iOS 5, or anything like that, it, the App Store will tell them to that it is required to upgrade to iOS 10. I haven't tried it on iOS 9, so I didn't notice any glitches, but um, to be safe, we are going to set this to iOS 10.0. So, um, so here we're also going to do requires full screen. So that, um, so pretty much when we load our app, it will require full screen. So over here on the left, uh, under our supporting files folder, we're going to click the uh, little arrow and we're gonna drag every single image like here drag it underneath our supporting files make sure this box here is ticked copy items if needed so what this pretty much will do is it will copy I it will copy and make um, a clone of all of these images in our projects folder so pretty much if we if we delete these or if we move them from our desktop it, it doesn't matter at all and make sure add to targets this is also ticked our um, fruit catcher these two don't need to be ticked because they're not required but make sure if this is unticked make sure this is ticked the first option depending on depending on what you named your project it might it might look much different so simply click finish so what we have here is an, our apple image our banana image our basket, our bomb, bounce, or death, which is these are our two sound effects. Forest background, which is like the background of the game. Missile, and that is our orange, one of our fruit, strawberry, and watermelon. All right, so we're also gonna we're also gonna um add a custom font. So I don't have it in the folder, but it's in. It's in a uh, different uh, folder here. This is my um, game that I'm working on. We're gonna uh, um, drag Jelly Crazies into our supporting files. Now, simply again, make sure add the targets. The fruit catcher is ticked, and copy items if needed is also ticked. Let me sorry. Let me drag that to the center, and click finish. So now we have a custom font along with other game uh, textures in, in, in their supporting files. So before we can use this however, we have to um, make sure that um, in our build phases it is detected in our copy bundle resources. So, so now that so obviously my jelly crazies the TTF is visible here so we don't have to do anything in here. But if it is not shown up in here or your font name is not listed, simply click the plus button and simply search it up and add and click add. 
which I don't have to do because it is already added, but just in case. So the next step is we're gonna go to info.plist and over here on our information property list we're gonna click the plus button and we're gonna do font provided by application. Alright, so click the, sorry, um, whoops, 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 delete, delete that, um, simply click this arrow here in the fonts provided by application. Now you will see here item 0 and then type string, but the value is empty. What here, what we're gonna, and what we're gonna add is the name of our font, so our name is jellycrazies.ttf. If you're using a different font, you will, you might you have to enter it differently and you have and it is case it is case sensitive so the j and the c de depending on what it is in under supporting files would have to be capitalized as well so here we're going to go to value and my font na my font name was jelly crazy the ttf so just to make sure i'm going to check and and it's correct so as, I'll repeat this because this is extremely important if you're using a custom font. They have this is case sensitive. So depending on what it is called over here, this has to be capitalized as well. So my J was capitalized and my C is capitalized. All right. So now we have enabled our project to use the custom font named Jelly Crazies. So we're all good to go. Now we're gonna go to our main storyboard. And let me get rid of that thing on the left. Now, since we are um doing, since we are designing our app in landscape view, we're gonna tap the top of our uh, view controller so it's highlighted blue, and we're gonna go here to our attribute, to our attribute inspector, and we're gonna do size to free form. We're gonna go to the ruler over here, the fifth, the fifth tab. Now we're gonna sim we're just gonna do put we're gonna put the six six seven on the width and the width will go to the height. So we just simply have to um, make this opposite. There we go. Which is the size of our i which is the size of the iPhone 7. Which um you can do iPhone 6 as iPhone 5 size if you want to, but I'd rather work with the iPhone 7 screen because for me that is the most ideal. So I'm gonna simply command S this to save. Now for this now for here, I'm gonna scroll down here and we're gonna find an image view that covers the entire view. And this one will be for forest background at PNG. Like so that is the um, main menu. We're gonna also drag another view controller size will be free form and do the same thing as we did last time iPhone this is this is the size of the iPhone 7 which is when it's landscape so get now for this tutorial we'll just be getting everything set up for the next tutorial so before we design the main menu and the second view which is which will be pretty much the entire game this view we're gonna go to file and new and we're gonna do file again. Now it will say choose a template for your new file. Underneath iOS, you're gonna do source cocoa touch class, which is a which will generate header files and implementation files. So cocoa touch class, make sure that is highlighted and then click next. Now this class, make sure subclass of view controller and XIB file is unticked. And our language is Objective C. Now we're gonna name this game game code, and we're gonna click next and save it. And now we have generated our header files and our implementation files. Now in Objective C, I will simply explain this as sim as simple as I can. In in our header files. Here we are. We write declarations of strings, variables, image views, actions, IB actions, all in here. So here is implementation files where we pretty much do all the coding. We pretty much manipulate what what we have declared in here 
in our implementation files, we manipulate what they do. So pretty much the entire game will be will be typing here. This will be the almost like the entire code. So um before so now we are going to um link this second um view controller. So make sure it is highlighted blue. We're gonna go to our identity inspector and underneath our custom class we are gonna type in game code. Now, now I I named mine game code. So if you if any of you named yours differently, you'll name you have you'll have to type whatever you called your header file and implementation files. So that's that's um. So now we've got our second view controller set up ready. So um, we'll we'll drag in another image view here, which will be um, which will sorry. Resize this so it covers the entire screen. The lit those those blue lines over here will help you out, so don't so don't worry. Am I recording? Okay. So we're gonna um do forest background to PNG again. Now sorry if I if I looked at this because the last time I tried recording this I pressed stop recording by accident and I didn't realize that I was actually um not recording at all. So I'm just making sure. Okay, so we're gonna design the uh, main menu first for this tutorial. So for this tutorial, we're gonna drag in a label. I'm gonna resize that so it is over here, on the just like over here on the very top. We're gonna center line centered alignment. Make sure the lines is five, and I'm simply gonna call this fruit catcher. Now here is where we are going to use our custom font for the first time. So over here on the font, we're going to go um, click this T, little T. And underneath our font, we're going to click the, this little arrow. And we're going to click custom. Now underneath family, we're going to look for jelly crazies. And here we go. We are now using this, this custom font that we had dragged in earlier in the video and now it is being used okay so I'm gonna um may, I'm gonna resize that so it is aligned I'm gonna change the color to blue um, you depending on what depending on what you guys want so for me this is pleasing to the eye but some of you might have different opinions you can choose whatever color you wish okay we're gonna drag in a button. So this will say start game. We want we're gonna make sure that this this button is big enough for our player to tap, because it'll be a pain in the ass to um if it's like very little. So we're gonna do custom jelly crazies or whatever your font name was. Resize that so it fits. So this will be that. I'll put it like this. All right, good to go. Text color to be black, or actually to be red. Let's see. Okay, so for this tutorial, I don't really have to emphasize much on on the blending in, but it. But if you guys want to submit this app to the App Store, I'd suggest making a custom image for this button and making it blend in the background. But simply for this tutorial, I'm simply gonna. I don't really have to mind about the color. So again, apologies if this this seems a little um little off. So what we're gonna do next is make sure this button will take us straight into the next view. So because let me um demonstrate let me demonstrate how it is so far. So over here we're gonna go to the top left corner and and build and run. So it is building and running the fruit catcher, just compiling asset catalogs and signing the product. Now it is running Fruit Catcher on this iPhone 7 iOS simulator. So now, when we click the start game, nothing happens. It's like this, see? Nothing happens yet. So what we're gonna do is, once we click this, we'll be taken straight into this, which is the game code. So let me stop that. Our iOS simulator is ran portrait because we, um, 
in general, we um, did the device orientation to be landscape left and landscape right. So that's so good job, fellow excoders. So next, simply the last thing for this tutorial is control control click or right or right click and drag it over, which is um which now we will um have menu which we will have um a pop up over here. Simply click modal. So there you have it. Now when we build and run again, so build succeeded. Oops, there we go. There we go. So now for now because we have for now we'll be designing um for now we've only designed the main menu, but in the second tutorial we'll be designing the the actual game. So it'll there'll be like the goal, the high score. Our basket and the fruits falling down, but um, we have so we've got everything else prepared for the next tutorial. So thank you all for watching. I will uh, meet you all again in the second part of the series, and um, hit like, hit subscribe if this helped you out. And yep, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Stay tuned.